Hi, good morning. Welcome back to Mike Makes It. You join me in my truck again. We're doing a little upgrade project for the deployable air steps I fitted some months ago. You may have seen an earlier video. Now, there's an um, air compressor control switch here. Typically, this is in the forward position. So when the ignition switch is on, if the compressor needs to charge itself up, uh, the compressor will kick in. Uh, unfortunately, it draws 43 amps. And what I'm trying to get away from is trying to start the truck up with a 43 amp load run, i.e. the air compressor. And I can switch the air compressor off there, and that's fine. That gets away with the 43 amp load run I'm trying to turn the truck. But I've got to remember to put that back on. And very often I forget, and in the end I run out of air, steps don't work. So plan is today, so that switch can remain in the always on position, is to fit a purchase I've just made from Banggood. And that is a 5 to 300 second timer. It's got normally open and normally closed contacts on the relay there. So the plan is I'm going to splice it into the wiring on here. So when you put the engine on, the compressor won't trip in because it's waiting for this timer to, to actuate. So three minutes into the journey, if the switch is in the on position and if the compressor wants air, there's a, a send switch. If it drops below 90 PSI, the compressor trips in. So if it drops below 90 and it's allowed to switch on, depending on the position of the relay on here, the, the compressor will switch on. Basically, that's the plan again, the way with um, having a 43 amp load when I turn the ignition. And also, it's kind of old age memory jogger. I won't have to switch this back on uh, when the engine's running, So, which very often I forget. So, look, we'll get this up on the bench. You can see how this works. Um, then we'll take this panel out, splice a couple of wires in, and uh, away we go. Should be a simple, simple fix. All right, there's the timer. Bit of a lash up on the old breadboard. 12 volts are coming in here, currently not switched on. It's as if the ignition is off on the uh, truck. Three cables here, uh, common, normally open, normally closed. Go into a couple of relays just for uh, display purposes or demonstration purposes, I should say. On the board, coincidentally, there's two LEDs. A red one, uh, approximately here, which is indicating power to the relay board. And a green one indicating relay is actuated. So if I put power to the board now, LEDs come on, time is actuated. In about 10 seconds, you'll see a green light and these two LEDs swap over, just like that. It's a little bit inaccurate on the lower uh, time settings, like five, six seconds. I don't need it for that. I want it for the longer duration. And if I put the relay setting or the, the timer setting, I should say, to maximum, it's regularly times at about four minutes, 20 seconds, which is going to be ideal for me. So we'll go back to this, take the power off, turn the ignition on in the truck. Imagine four minutes have gone by. Uh, compressor's not on, but it would like to come on. Relay actuates, compressors allow to switch on and uh, fills a reserve air tank. And it'll remain in this condition, i.e. compressors allow to switch on or off as it needs to, so long as the engine's running. But turn the engine off like that, and this will all reset, it'll retime. So in a couple of seconds time, you'll see the changeover contacts actuate, the red and the green swap over. These, I had um, a bag full. Five of these cost me £4.20 delivered to the UK from Banggood. And it's really well built. It's based on a 555 timer. Um, good quality relay. Looks sound if you turn it over. I've had a little inspection of it all. It's basic, but it works. So, um, yeah, a little extra wiring on there. Get it down to the truck. I'm not going to put it in a case. I'm just going to put it in a bit of clear heat shrink just in case I need to alter the time settings, but I don't think I will. We'll whack it up to maximum and uh, fit, and fit it and forget it. So yeah, down to the truck, let's splice into the wiring. Put a few wires on there, not exactly color coded like I want, but they're the cables I got, so I'm gonna work with that. This is where I need to fit it. This is, bought this assembly for mud. It allows you to uh, do away with your drink holders and put up to six switches on, I believe, two, four, five, and I'll put a USB socket in here, which is quite good. 
and you've still got room for a cigar lighter or an accessory um, power outlet there. So i just got to take this out, a little bit of wiggling, it'll come out. There's a bit of a rat's nest in here, as you can see in a moment. There, so all I've got to do now is work out uh, where I've got to splice this in. So it's, it's going to be at home in there really. So I'll crack on, get that spliced in, I can show you the end result. But basically I'm going to put this... Um, unit in series with the switch so I could still got full control over the system because on the switch it's a three-way middle ones off um, forward control is effectively auto which this will be configured into and if I tip the switch on the back switch it's on all the time the uh, the compressor actually it runs all the time so I can always override this if I need to so yeah that's going to go in series with the switch so yeah, a bit of uh, chopping and finding where the cables are and I'll come back to you and I'll show you the finished article. Now well, there you go, that's all spliced in now. I'll do a full demo when it's all back together. I've got a bit of heat shrink to put on here. But largely, the switch, I can override it still uh, with no, you know, without the ignition on if I have to in an emergency, which I wouldn't normally want to do in the other on position, which will allow the compressor to come on if it's short of air when the ignition's on. That's the position I've just put the switch in. We'll turn the ignition on. Bluetooth mode. Ignition's on, power to the timer. If it needs air, green light will come on and you'll hear the compressor. Compressor's charging now. Gets to 120 pounds, turns off and it'll remain in this state until I reset uh, the ignition. But turn the ignition off and back on. We'll do that. Turn the ignition off. Back on. The compressor won't need air, it's just charged up. Green light will come on. It could have air if needed. Uh, if we open and close the doors a few times, you can hear the steps banging up and down. Once we drop below 90 PSI, the compressor will cut in. £120, off we go, it's fine. So I'll pack this all back up, put a bit of heat shrink around a few cables, and I've got to put a sleeve of heat shrink over the timer itself, and uh, I'll show you from the top. Right, there you go, all back together at last. That's pretty much how the Defender looks. Uh, give you a very quick demo. Ignition is off. If I need to put the air compressor on for some reason, I can override the timer. Normally it would run in that position. Now in that position, when I put the ignition on, you'll see the ignition come on. There you go. Normally the air compressor will trip right in now and be a bit annoying. So I'd have to switch it off, start the engine, then I forget to switch it back on, so I run out of air. But now it can be left permanently in that position. And once the timer time has elapsed, uh, four minutes in this case, the compressor will turn on. So, as far as I'm concerned, basically leave it in that position all the time now. Compressor will look after itself. Um, well, yeah, that's the end of the video. It's all back together. I hope you found it interesting. If you have, thumbs up uh, would be great. Please subscribe. Um, more subscribers are very welcome. And thanks for watching. Mike makes it.